want to lift up your voice tonight. That tonight, the Lord will enrich your life. Give you understanding. Give you comprehension. And that the word will do good in your life, in the family, and in the church. In Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. That God's word will penetrate your heart. That God's will will be fulfilled in your life. Penetrating your life, helping you to be who you ought to be, bringing a revival in your heart, a revival in the family, a revival in every local church, a revival in the whole church together. everything you provided for us in Jesus name use us mightily use us to bless our families to bless our nation to bless all people that come across our way in Jesus name give us understanding tonight in Jesus mighty name we pray I'm reading to you from Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. We're reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Many times when we open the pages of the scriptures, I will read the scriptures, we forget that we're looking at the very mind of God, at the thoughts of God, at the plans of God, at the program of God. And many times when the Lord calls us and he says, here is the place to go, here is the thing to do, we forget that God is higher than we are, greater than we are. And what she promises is greater than understanding. And what she projects she wants to do is greater than what little plan we might have. But the Lord is reminding us tonight and he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. 
Neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Keep that in mind and understand that he leads us and he controls us and he makes us to go in the way that will bring unexpected blessings upon ourselves, upon our families, upon our church, and upon our community. I'm coming to Hosea chapter 3, and I'm reading here from verse 5. Hosea chapter 3, verse 5, Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. As he mentions the latter days, you understand, it's making the difference between the former days and the latter days. That is, things he did not do, and things he didn't think about in the earlier days, in the former days, he might do, he will do, even in your life today, in Jesus' name. Hosea chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 9. Hosea chapter 14, reading from verse 9. It says, who is wise, and he shall... And when God begins to direct and begins to control, it says, the wise will understand, and the prudent, he shall know them, for the ways of the Lord are right. Men may not understand, even believers may not understand, but the ways of the Lord are right. The just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. You will not be a transgressor. Obadiah, Chapter 1, only one chapter. Obadiah, it's after Amos. I'm reading from verse 17. It says, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. I thought somebody there would say, Amen. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. I will possess. Some families there you will possess. Our church will possess in Jesus' name. We need to discover the divine pathway into the latter day blessings the Lord is revealing to us from his word. Tonight we're looking at the divine pathway to latter day blessings. The divine pathway to latter day blessings. I'm coming to Joel chapter 2. Verse 11, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, who can abide it? Come to verse 12, therefore, also now, Therefore, because the Lord is going to do great things. Therefore, because the Lord is great, greater than your imagination. Therefore, because the day of the Lord is near. Therefore, because his wonders, he wants to begin to reveal, to reveal in your life. To be made bare. 
the hidden resources of the Lord. He wants to shovel. He wants to overflow in your life. He says, therefore, also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. He says, this is not the time to be reasoning of the past. Why did this happen in the past? Why didn't I get that in the past? Why didn't I hold that in the past? Why didn't this come to me in the past? It says, it's not the day. God, turn unto the Lord your God. He's talking to people in his own cho chosen nation. He's talking to the sinners. He's talking to the backsliders. He's talking to the believers. He's talking to the saints. He's talking to the ministers. He's talking to the leaders. And he says, turn unto me with all your heart. He goes on to say, for he is a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he repented him, he changes his mind concerning the evil. Who knows if he will return and repent and leave the blessing behind him. He will come tonight. He'll touch you tonight. He'll visit you tonight. And he will leave the blessing in your life, even tonight in Jesus' name. Even a meat offering and a drink offering. It says, unto the Lord your God, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a first. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Set apart the congregation. Lift up, stir up the congregation. Preach to the congregation. Alert the congregation. Call the congregation to seek in the face of the Lord. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breasts, and let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Then he goes on, he says in verse 17, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine inheritance to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Unbelievers will not rule over you. The people of dark powers will not rule over you. Idol worshippers will not rule over you. And those who is a bad, bad plan from village, from the forest, from the river, they will not rule over you. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? If anybody has been asking you, where is your God? They will see the power of God in your life. The provision of God in your life. And they will see the great things the Lord will do in your life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. Come to verse 21. Fear not, O Lord. Fear not, ye people of God. Be glad and rejoice. Nothing will take away your joy. Nothing will dampen your gladness. For the Lord will do great things. When? For the Lord will do great things. Where? He knows life. He knows family. For the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth a fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength, fruitfulness in your life. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. 
the former blessings were moderate. This one is going to overflow. This one is going to bring surplus in your life. And it's going to bring overwhelming blessings in your life in Jesus' name. A flood. I said a flood. A flood of mighty blessings, showers of blessings in your life in Jesus' name. And it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worms, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Satisfaction has come. Sufficiency has come. The supernatural power of God will wipe everything negative out of your life in Jesus' name. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. Did you hear that? The Lord is going to deal with you in a wonderful way. A joyful way. A cheerful way. A way that will bless supernatural overflowing blessing in your life in Jesus' name. And my people shall not be ashamed. Are they there tonight? The people who will not be ashamed. I said, are they there tonight? The people who are going to experience the supernatural power of God. Are they there tonight? Believers, are believers there tonight? The people of God shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God, and none else. Once again, my people shall not be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out of my spirit. To start it to you, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered for in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. A good church, amen. Tonight, as we look at this passage in particular, that is Joel chapter 2, I'm talking to you on the divine pathway. To latter day blessings. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our preparation as submissive believers. Our preparation as submissive believers. The Lord Himself has called us. And He's saying, He's giving us some directions there, some directives there. He's giving us some promises and then the preparation that we ought to make. And he calls us to supplication. He calls us to intercession. He calls us to prayer. He calls us to repentance. He calls us to rising up and following the way and the path of the Lord. Our preparation as submissive brothers or brethren. Number two, the promise of super abundant blessings. The promise of super abundant blessings. Point number three, the power and supernatural benefits. The power and supernatural 
benefits. We're coming back to point number one. Our preparation as submissive brethren. The church of the living God, the people of God that are called to pray. And we're called to seek the face of the Lord for ourselves, for our nation, for our communities, for the whole of society, so that through us, the blessing of God will flow into the lives of people, the people we know and the people we don't know. The whole nation, come back to Joel chapter 2, reading here from verse 12. It says, therefore also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. Here is the Lord calling us, the solemn assembly. Here is the Lord calling us to real fervent praying. Here is the Lord calling us to sincere repentance. And it says, thus says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. And with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, not your garment. It says we should go beyond the external, and go beyond the visible, and go beyond religious activity, and let our repentance come from the depth of our heart. It says, rent the heart and not the garment. Break up your fallow ground. Any carelessness, any superficiality, any worldliness, any carnality, it says, wash it off. And it says, for he is gracious. It's saying that the Lord our God is gracious and merciful. is low to anger and of great kindness. And he repenteth him of the evil. What he means by that is, if he has planned, if he has purposed, if he has proclaimed, if he has pronounced any judgment on any group of people, on an individual, on a family, on a tribe, on a community, on a nation. If the people of God will seek the face of the Lord, he will turn that judgment around. The Lord will have mercy on every individual, mercy on every family, mercy on every community, and mercy upon our country in Jesus' name. In the peace of our country, we have peace. In the progress of our country, we have progress. And in the promotion of our country, out of the dungeon, out of darkness, into the marvelous light of the Lord, it's in that promotion we ourselves we have progress and you are going to have prosperity. That's why it goes on to say, who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him. He's talking about a blessing upon the whole nation, a blessing upon the whole community, a blessing upon every family. And then he goes on to say, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Let those who are sleeping wake up. Let those who are sluggish rise up. And let those who are lethargic, let them become zealous for the Lord. That this is a moment of calling upon the Lord. It says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a past. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders. It says, uh, gather the children, and even the very little children still sucking the breast, and let the bridegroom go forth out of a chamber, and the bride out of a closet. In verse 17, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep be between the porch and the altar. It's talking about heart rendering repentance. It's talking about heart felt repentance. It's talking about a kind of rep repentance that comes from the depths of the heart. And it says, we will pray, we should pray in that repentance that the Lord shall spare thy people. Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine inheritance to reproach. That the he then shall rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? That question will no more be asked for you. They will know that you serve a living God, a mighty God, 
a God who is able to bless and who is going to bless you. As he calls everyone to repentance, who are the people that God is expecting to repent? That if we will take the word of God seriously and repent as he has called us to repentance, that great blessings will come. On surpassing, a, a surpassing blessing will come. Great, mighty blessings will come. Number one, personal repentance. That means you as an individual, you want the Lord to bring his blessing upon your life, upon your family, upon your local community, and upon your church, and upon our church altogether, and upon our country. Number one is personal repentance. I'm looking at Second Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. All those promises we have read in Joel chapter 2 and other promises too. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us watch, not willing that any should perish, not willing that any should be lost, not willing that any should die and go to hell, not willing that any, whoever that person is, you or myself or any other person, high or low, a king or just a citizen, not willing that any should perish, but that, how many people now? All shall come to repentance, personal repentance. Number two, parental repentance. There are times the way the parents have lived their lives, they have not shown a good example, an uplifting example, a righteous example. They have not been exemplary before their children, mothers before their daughters, and fathers before their sons. And because of that, these children, the younger generation, they're going astray. Home training is lacking, and home education is lacking, and family devotion is lacking, family instruction is lacking. And because of that, our sons, our daughters, our young people are going astray. And the Lord is asking, number one, for personal repentance. Number two, is asking for parental repentance. We're coming to Lamentation chapter 2. Lamentation chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 18. Lamentation chapter 2, reading from verse 18. Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down. Like, like a river, and day and night, give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eye cease. That is, your heart is broken over your children. You say, yes, they were born in the church. You were born. I was already born again, and my wife was born again when the children were born. But now they've gone this way, that way. You must accept your fault. You must accept your negligence. You must go before the Lord in parental repentance. In verse 19, in verse 19, it says, Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thine hands toward him for the life of thy young children. He's talking to the parents. Lift up your heart. Lift up your hand, rend your heart, be sorrowful, go on your knees because of your young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. It's calling us to number one, personal repentance. Number two, parental repentance. Number three, the prince's repentance. The prince over the land, the prince over the community, the king, the ruler, the leader over a community of people. If the leadership has not given a good example, if the leadership has not led us in the right way, and now the nation suffers or the people suffer, then even as we have personal repentance, we have 
the parental repentance, we also have the princess repentance. I'm coming to First Chronicles chapter 21. First Chronicles chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Satan stood up against Israel. There are many people because they do not see what is behind the curtain. They do not see what Satan was planning for Israel or for any nation of any society. Anything that happens, they put all the blame on David. They put all the blame on this and that. And David eventually realized that he had been pushed into something he shouldn't have done. But the revelation must come. Somebody must get to that David and make him to understand, look at your action and look at what your action has produced. And now he tells us in verse 17, verse 17 of that same chapter, it says, And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned. Here is uh, the princess repentance. The prince, the king over the people is now repenting and he says, I've done evil indeed, but as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord, my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people that they should be pledged. Number one, personal repentance. You must take this serious and go before the throne of God and say, yes, I will repent. And God will answer your prayer. Parental repentance. And the Lord will rescue all our children from all the waywardness in Jesus' name. And the princess repentance, number four, is the priest's repentance. The priest's repentance. Priestly repentance. Priestly repentance. Repentance. We're coming back to Joel. Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, I read here from verse 12. Wherefore, also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garment, and turn, that's repentance, and turn and turn unto the Lord your God. Come to verse 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let the priests also come before the Lord. Rend your heart and tear yourself away from everything that is wrong and seek the face of the Lord in genuine repentance. And then... He will deliver his people from the hands of the heathens in Jesus' name. Somebody said amen over there. Amen. Number five is the prodigal's repentance. The prodigal's repentance. The prodigal is the one who had been in the father's house. And he was in the comfort of the father's house. In the fellowship of the father's house. In the provision of the father's house. In the privileges of the father's house. But one day, he said, I'm going. I'm leaving. He had, he had his own reason. He wanted to go outside. Outside the umbrella of the protection of the father, of the father and the family. He went away and then he suffered for it. Became a prodigal, a prodigal son. But you see, the prodigal must also repent. The father is not going to go to him in the far country. The prodigal's repentance. We're coming to Luke chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 15, verse 18. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose. It's not just that he planned to do it. He did it. 
It's not just a proposal. He did it. It's not just I'm thinking I'm going to repent. He actually did it. When you hear the word of God, there is just one thing to do. Just obey, just obey. If the Spirit of God is knocking at the door of your heart and is saying, you need to repent of this, you need to repent of this and repent of that, at that very moment is the time to make up your mind, I will arise and go. And he arose, and then we are told, and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and bring it on him and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. He came back to all the provision of the Father again. Every one of us were coming back to all the abundant provision of our Father's house in Jesus' name. Personal repentance, parental repentance, the prince's repentance, the priest's repentance, the prodigal's repentance, the prophet's repentance. You see, the prophets are not only to warn us, they too, they're to repent. The prophets are not just to declare the word of God to us and say, hear the word of the Lord. Here is prophecy that has its place at a time. But as you look at the whole nation, as you look at the whole church, as you look at the people of God, you come before the Lord, and you're not coming as a holy, holy prophet. You're not coming as a better than them all prophet. You're not coming as a person that say, my life is impeccable. My life is holy. My life is righteous. That may be so, but leave that behind now and come for the nation and come for the people and come for, the, for Zion. We're coming to Daniel, Daniel chapter 9. In Daniel chapter 9, I'm reading here, you know the story of Daniel, you know the life of Daniel. He was, uh, he was spotless, he was spotless, he was sinless. He did everything properly. A courageous man, a conscientious man, a righteous man. But all the same, when he came for intercession, it was a different thing entirely. The prophet's repentance. Daniel chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 3. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with pastina and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. I made my confession. It was standing identified with the nation. And it was, it was not saying, oh Lord, you know how righteous I am, how holy I am, and how faithful I am. And you know how uncompromising I am. That's not this, not the place for that now. I made my confession and said, Oh Lord, the great and the dreadful God, keeping the co keeping covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned. He didn't say they have sinned. Bad people. That's why they came to Babylon. They have sinned. They are backsliding. No, not at all. This is the prophet's repentance. And it says, we have sinned and we have committed iniquity. And have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the, thy presence and from thy judgment. Verse 6, neither have we akined unto thy servants the prophets which speak in thy name to our kings and to our princes and to our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteous, be righteousness belongeth unto thee. But unto us, he didn't say unto them, he counted himself as part of them. He was a beloved prophet in the sight of the Lord, a beloved man. All the same, this Daniel, greatly beloved of the Lord, said, unto us belongeth confusion of faces, as at this day, to the men of Judah 
and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither thou hast driven them. It says, because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. It goes on now to verse 11. Ye, all Israel, have transgressed thy law even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is put upon us and the oath that is written in the law. Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. That's the prophet's repentance, not the genealogy of the people. All the people, without exception, each one has uh, gone before the Lord repenting, and the parents have gone before the Lord repenting, and the priests and the priests have gone before the Lord repenting, the prodigal, the prophet, they've gone before the Lord repenting. Now the old people together, all the people together in Second, second Chronicles, the people's repentance. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, we're looking at verse 14. If my people, all the people now, if my people, all the people that came, that claim to belong to the Lord, if my people, if nobody will act or pretend holy, holy person, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that's the repentance there, then I will hear from heaven. The Lord will hear in heaven. Then he says, I will forgive their sin. He will forgive the sin of everyone as we repent. He's going to forgive in Jesus' name. And tell me what uh, finalizes it there. I want to hear you. Say that again. Let your inner man hear you saying it. You know what? Whenever there's a problem in the nation, poverty, crime, violence, farming, unemployment, challenges, difficulties, Christian people, church people, they just stay aloof. We're nice, they are bad, we're good, they're evil. Look at what these people are doing. They're bringing all these things upon us. And then we're praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. But the prayer, bless me. Lord, change my circumstance. Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. But there's general famine. If that general famine is not addressed, all the provisions for individuals are going to be affected. If the economy is down and your own economy, private, personal work is going to be affected. And so we need to understand just getting a personal blessing is not enough at such a time like this. And if there's going to be any change, the church is not going to hide behind the curtain somewhere and then throwing information and throwing messages to the people outside there. It's your fault. We're suffering because of you. We're suffering because of you. Look at this now. Children cannot go to school. Look at this now, this and that. Everybody must take part in the repentance. And the good thing will start from us. And the good thing will start from you. This church as a church, if we take everything we've read in the scriptures, we know the scriptures. This is deep and life. What kind of church? I said this is deep and life. And we can call it higher life, spiritual life, Bible church. And because we believe the Bible, and we read the Bible, and we study the Bible, and we hear the word of God from the Bible, we will do what the Lord is telling us to do. There will be healing in this land. Verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, we have to humble ourselves. 
come down from that ivory tower and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I may. Then perhaps, tell me what you find in your Bible, I will hear from heaven. God will answer our prayer. Things will turn around in this stage. Things will turn around in this nation through you. What is the person I'm talking to there? I say through you. Through me. Say through me. God will make you a change agent in Jesus' name. I will forgive their sin. Can God forgive sinners? Can God forgive government officials? Oh, I can't hear my people now. Can God forgive even those in the prison? Can God forgive those on the streets? It says, I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. We'll be talking about healing of our body and healing of our families and healing of those who have a kind of a, a problem. But now the healing is coming for our land. You will be alive to see it. I said you will be alive to see it. It will not happen behind you. It will happen at your own time. I pray God will prolong your life. You prolong your days, you will see. Point number two now, the promise of super abundant blessings. The promise of super abundant blessings. I'm coming to Joel chapter 2, verse 21. Joel chapter 2, verse 21. Fear not, O Lord. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Are children of Zion in the house today? Children of Zion, are you present here tonight? Be glad then and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vase shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore. Is God a liar? And I will restore. Will God do it? Is God a faithful God? Is he a covenant keeping God? He will do it in your life. He will restore everything the church might have lost. He will do it in Jesus' name. The glory of the latter days will come in Jesus' name. If you say it, if I say it, if we agree together, if we say it in the church, if we say it at home, if we say it when we are talking to each other, if we say it in the office, whatever the people of the world, whatever they are saying, they do not have a final say, we have the final say. He says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty. If you have lost your job, you are getting greater jobs back. If you have lost anything, you are getting multiple fold back in Jesus' name. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. He will deal wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. 
and ye shall know, and ye shall know, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Look at verse 21. This is abiding peace, abiding in peace. You know, as you look at the nation, as you look at the insecurity, and as you look at the problems that plague the nation, it's like there is a conflict everywhere, patrol everywhere, confusion everywhere. There is a palpitation of heart everywhere. It appears there's no peace. But now, verse 21, abiding peace. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Verse 22, agricultural productivity. Agricultural productivity. We will have enough to eat in every family. Enough to eat in every community. Enough to eat in every state. Look at this, verse 22. Agricultural productivity. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. And the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. It is coming. Verse 23, abundant provision. Abundant provision. When the rivers are overflowing, you cannot remain dry. You will not remain weary. Look at verse 23, abundant provision. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Be glad then, who are to be glad? I said, who are to be glad? Ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will, he will, he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Verse 24 now is assured prosperity. Assured prosperity. Give me a good amen for your own life. Amen for your provision. Amen for your prosperity. You will not be a borrower, you'll be a giver. You will not be living from hands to mouth, you'll open your mouth wide and the Almighty God will feel it. Verse 24, assured prosperity, and the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25, amazing providence. Amazing providence. And I will restore to you. And I will restore to you. Let me read it for myself. And he will restore to me the years that the locusts have eaten. And the canker worm. And the caterpillar. And the palmer worm. My great army, which I sent among you. Verse 26, all sufficient plenty. Look at the person beside you there and say, all sufficient plenty. When I visit in your house, there will be plenty to serve. There will be plenty that will remain. Plenty. I'm looking for somebody. Plenty. What are you? Plenty. Look at verse 26. All sufficient plenty. In verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people. Mention your name, mention your name, mention your name. And my people. My brother there, what's your name? My sister there, what's your name? You will never be ashamed. Verse 27, almighty presence. The presence of the almighty. When you go out, he'll go with you. When you come in, it'll come with you. When you go to the office, it'll go with you. No evil will touch your life. 
verse 27, verse 27, and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people, my brother there, and my people, my sister there, and my people shall never, never, never be ashamed. Somebody shout, Amen. Your time of blessing has started. Jeremiah. Chapter 33, Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3, call unto me, and I will answer thee. Answer prayer tonight. Prevailing prayer tonight. Overcoming prayer tonight. Answer coming from heaven tonight. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Verse 6, verse 6, behold, I will bring it health and kill. You are healed in Jesus' name. I will kill them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Verse 9, and it shall come and it shall be to me for a name of joy. A praise and honor before all nations of the earth which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. They will hear. Your friends will hear. The people who are not so friendly, they will hear. Your neighbors will hear. And those who are far away, they will hear of the good that the Lord will do unto you. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I proclaim and procure unto it. Your time has come. Joel chapter 2, point number 3 now. The power and the supernatural benefits. We're coming to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. 